Photoshop video tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to create a spiral. Now, depending on the size of document, it might require a bit of trial and error. I've got 1400 by 1400. I'm going to use a document for the source spiral of 100 by 100. But you can obviously vary it and try it. Now, first thing to do, just go over here and I'm using a shape and I'm going to use the ellipse tool, fill a black. And I'm just going to create a shape there. Now, what I'm going to do is go over here to the properties and I'm going to set the size here. Now, the document's 1400, so I'm going to go for 1400, 0, and 0. So I've positioned exactly the correct positions for the document. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to image and image size and I'm going to put it down to 100 by 100. Could go 50 50, whatever. Click OK. Now, define pattern, edit, define pattern. Click OK. Once you've done that, I'm going back to another document, 1400 by 1400, and I'm going to go for edit and fill. Now, I can't apply this to a layer. It does seem to have a problem with layers, so it's best just to work with a background. So edit and fill, and set the pattern there. Set the custom shape as the one that you've just created, the pattern you just created, so, and set that on and set that to spiral. Click OK. And then you'll see this very basic. Now, you can actually tweak these, like I say, again, change the pattern scale depending on what you want. Now, this preview doesn't always match exactly the end result, really just depends on, again, the document. So it's very much trial and error a bit. So you can actually just set that maybe to minus four and you'll see it just creates a slightly tighter, very bit cleaner anyway. And it, again, you can maybe go minus six and you'll find at some point that it just doesn't generate a very nice spiral at all. Click OK. And you can change obviously the ring spacing as well, but I'm just gonna click OK at this point. And there you've got the spiral. Now you'll see that it's not the sharpest of spirals. I mean, it's a, it's a spiral design, but you can see some very rough sort of thing. Obviously, I've zoomed in anyway, so uh, it's uh, so I could actually slightly put it to 100. It might, so it's less, but uh, obviously you can see that it's not perfect. So you might want to try things like using a Gaussian blur, maybe oil painting and stylized, quite a nice one. So, so what you can do, just go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. So just select that one. And again, it's... Go okay, tweak that until you're happy with the. I think that's about reasonable. You can see a nice smooth sort of spiral design. Now, okay, I say you can vary the, the spacing to your heart's content. Now, once you've actually got that spiral design, of course, you can tweak it using various things such as image and adjustments, and maybe go to HDR toning. So, what you can do, you can actually so you can actually make it a lot fainter there, or maybe very much darker. And you can just vary it, make a much more intense spiral just by using the HDR toning. And you can create some unusual effects by modifying the radius and strength and the gamma and so on and so on. So you can just, so once you're happy with that, and again, you can use other effects such as, I would say, filter and stylize oil paints, another one that creates a nice, though it does unfortunately make a slight smearing down there at the midpoint. Right, so once you've actually got this, of course, what you can do, layer, you can actually duplicate it now, so you can actually create a duplicate layer. And you might, so you want to create a bigger, you can actually, of course, scale that up, and then maybe scale it, and it obviously works to a reasonable degree, depending on how clean you want it to look. And you can use then blending modes to create some interesting sort of distortions effects that way. I think I multiply, or maybe difference, Great unusual effects as well. But again, so you can, it's up to you, of course, once you've actually got the initial spiral design. And of course, what you can do, once you've actually got it on like that, you can then, I'm just gonna flatten it at this point. You can, of course, distort the design using various filters or, again, duplicate layer. Then use edit and transform, maybe add perspective in. So you can actually just distort the design spiral that way and you can see you can create a whole range of different spirals and again you can blend them in different ways as well 
Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.